Okay, hi guys. Um, as you can see, the co-cots undergone a little bit of work. Now, unfortunately, um, the weather's gone a little bit tits up, which isn't ideal, considering I need to get this thing working again. So I'm kind of... I don't have much else to film at the moment, because I've got to make like a little... Um, well, I've got to replace these. These are what I originally made to hold the brake caliper onto the um, go-kart piece of tubing, which has one of these bolts go through it. As you'll be able to see, there's a lot of slack in that. You can see how much smaller the bolt is than that, so I've got a piece of aluminium which I can machine to make a bushing. Other than that, it's going to be pretty straightforward to put it back together, basically. And hopefully during the process you'll be able to see kind of how I've put this thing together. Um, I have the tripod, so I'll try my best, but because of the rain I can't move the camera away from the house because it gets wet. <laughs> it's not really rain, it's just like really, really fine drizzle. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's uh, get you have a look at the light. Yeah, you can see it there. That's basically what we got. It's not snow, but that's kind of what I, why I want this thing back together because I kind of want the camera... I want the uh, go-kart working again before we get the snow. First thing I'm going to do is plain and straightforward, put the bolts on the uh, put the wheels on the axle, followed by the washer and the bolt. And then I can uh, hold the rear end up with something so it doesn't sit at such a secure angle and start putting the seat on, the steering, probably the engine and throttle system. I've got the axle over there in the corner, which isn't finished yet. And I've got some bearings on the way, so hopefully this thing will be working by Friday, which is good because I want to take it up. I want to take it back to work. <laughs> and uh, I'll have to show you the other mod modification I've made to it. Okay, right. Should have set this up beforehand, but you know, it's me. Um, it is going to be a pretty simple piece of piece to put on. I can't remember how I put it on originally, so you know, how bad could it be? So now it goes, it goes on the top. That's all I can do. That's just basically a tie rod which connects both wheels to each other, so as one turns, they both turn. Um, now, I believe this came off the same way it went on. So, if we do, what side are you going to be able to see best? Probably this side. We'll do both sides anyway. And I can't remember the life of me. I think this I'll put it on back like this. It's going to be harder this time because I've painted it. That went on. This went on, and that went on, and this went on. Done by a washer and bolt. I think that's how I did it. I'm pretty sure of it anyway. Leave that on this side. Maybe this one. This one. To be honest, I do want to start cutting the front end up so I can uh, readjust it all to have all the right uh, camber angles. Because at the moment it does have a camber angle if you look at it from the front, which I hope maybe in another video or maybe at the end of this video I'll show you that this here is actually an angle. Unfortunately, it's not a very steep angle, and then the angle in which the axle is at um, doesn't really do that much fire in the checklist. always has positive camber, always, which isn't ideal, so that's not going to be affecting, helping my handling with my other little modification I made. I'll uh, show that in a little while. Alright, that bit was nice and easy. Now, I can't remember 
how hard this one here. This is to get off. This is the steering con. Put the pedals off of there. I'll, I'll put them there to paint them. So this should go up in this hole. But unfortunately, it has to slide up at the same time, which involves having to bend my uh, support here. So, excuse the arse. Oh, you little fucker, get him. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's an easy. Ish. Oh dear. They don't look right. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Now, I'll show you how this is all mounted up. Here, stop me. Alright. So I've got the steering column up here. This here will be eventually be painted black, but I'm not going to be doing that until it's all uh, back together, because I want to paint this while it's on here. I don't know why I want to, but I do. Probably just be easier. I don't want to take it all apart, really, either. Before, it looks like it's set up higher, because there's the marks. It's a mark where it was rubbing on before, so I might have bent this getting it off, which is fine. I might just be able to bend it back down. As long as the steering wheel goes on, I'll be all right. Yeah, bolts on from the top. So, let's see, it's just gonna bolt on nice and easy. Two washers and two nuts. It can't get much simpler. As long as I can find out what nuts it needs. Because there's like a quarter of a million nuts and bolts in my tiny little pot here. And some are nylock, some are not. And I can't remember where the nylock ones go and where the normal ones go. Now these ones I think are nylock because they've got finer threads. And they might go around at all because they've got paint on the threads. Hmm. <laughs> we'll try them. I mean, uh, if these ones don't fit, I'll try the normal bolts. That's even. Wank. I thought I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh no, they seem to be the right ones. Okay, I'll get them bolted up. Alrighty. Now we're going to put the Yelinka Drish attaches the steering wheel to the wheels. You can see how this is going to work for the uh, mechanically minded people. It's a very simple system. Of course, all of these parts have been utilised from old tractor parts. Like this here was a spacer for the pedals on the hydro drive. The actual rod was the original steering rod. You can see the old the scrape mark. Sorry if I can show you it. I also doesn't like to work when it's been focused in this close. You can see that darker part on the rod, that's actually where the uh, rod used to scrape on the chassis. But, you know. And there's just an old ball joint which came off my old little counter extractor which you guys never saw, unfortunately. Because I don't care what anyone says, that tractor was the bollocks. Alright, I can't remember. I had this, I think it was up like this. It went up underneath. Is it on front or did it go behind? I think it has to go on the front because it won't reach on the back. I can't even remember how I put this together. Oh well. <laughs> a bit off. Actually, I know how it went on. Like that. It goes on behind. Oh, penis. I'm going to need to go and get a spanner. That's easily done there. And this side is just an M10. Should have flipped the screen around on the camera. Get in. There we go. Ooh, it's taking a bit of the bang off. Doesn't matter, it shouldn't rust. There we go. Nice and easy. Shouldn't really do this while the other bolt's loose, but you turn the wheel and of course it all moves together. Like I said, very simple. Unfortunately it does produce very, very twitchy steering. Like, it's uh, rather strange to get used to driving it. So, yeah, I'm gonna tighten up that bolt. Righty ho, as far as we've got for tonight, there's some axles I'll show you in a second. But, as you can see, it's all together now. It's all nice and tight. This thing has got less play in it than the original tractor that the steering there are most of the parts came from, and including the. If you look back in my earlier videos, you'll see a uh, John Deere, well, Brickenstrap powered John Deere 
ride on mower, a little green thing. This thing has got less steering than that. This, that thing's got like two or three inches of play in the steering because all the tie rod ends and the little ball joints which connect the steering to the wheels are made of plastic and unfortunately they're not even fucked. They're just useless. There's so much play in all the little joints, the nuts, the bolts, the materials, everything's bolted to. It just all flexes and bends rather than turning the wheels. There's like two to three inches of play in it. This has got about a centimetre, maybe just over that. Oh, and that's only because I haven't tightened this up. <laughs> Silly me. Let's quickly nip that up because I know it's just a uh, 17, I think. It doesn't matter, I can't find the fucking ratchet spanner because that's what I was using. <laughs> oh, sh wank. Oh well. Oh, it's over there. Do me. It's better. There we go. Nice and tight. Okay, now that it's actually like a centimetre, if not less. And all of that is coming from that joint there, which can easily be solved just by welding a new washer on it with a smaller hole so that the the bolt that goes through it's a little bit tighter. That's all it is. But anyway, yes. Let's talk the reasons why my wheels, I want to change them. If you look at them now, you can actually see they actually have a little bit of positive camber. They actually lean at the top slightly outwards. Now, if I go completely... Oh fuck, left hand down. Yeah, that's one of the design flaws. I need to weld a stop. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make a little piece, get a piece of uh, a right angle uh, bar and just machine up a small piece which can be bolted on. It will touch this when it's bolted on so it can't come off any further. Because at the moment, if I go, keep going, keep going left hand down, eventually it starts turning the wheels right. Which, if you haven't driven the go-kart before and you do that, is rather scary when my boss found out after I let him drive it. But anyway, <laughs> move straight on again. Even when the wheel is in this position, it still has negative ca uh, positive camber the, so the top of the wheel leans out, which is bad. Because that allows the wheel to slip. It's like if your the go-kart still wants to travel in this direction while I'm driving, it's going to be kind of like dragging my finger along like this, where if it had a negative camber, so the top of the wheel was facing in, the bottom of it was facing out, like pushing my finger into the ground, which would kind of want it to turn, uh, kind of want, it'd want the front wheels to grip better so you can actually turn the way you face your wheels, which if I use my new axle, which I will be, this axle is 30 millimeter mild steel rather than the old 20 millimeter, actually I think this one's larger than 30 millimeter, I haven't actually measured it. All I've done is machine the ends down to 20 mil, and um, I've had to machine out the hubs a little bit to fit the axle. This piece, because I didn't want to have to machine the whole fucking axle down just to get the hubs to fit. Hubs are fine just to be machined out a small amount. So, I'm going to uh, be putting this on, and I'll be having it two wheel drive rather than originally it was one wheel drive, hence that hole in the axle. The wheel had a whole a little channel cut in the hub over the wheel, it lined up with that, oh you drop a bolt through and that would lock it together. Unfortunately that system didn't work very well. It rather eats the wheels. So, my solution was to completely redesign the rear axle, so I'll be cutting two slits in the uh, shafts there with an angle grinder which I'm not looking forward to, because the angle grinder is a bit of a butcher's tool in my opinion, and hmm, yeah, I'd rather do it with one of the um, milling machines we have at college, but Trying to get that thing to college is going to be hard enough. Getting it past security is going to be even harder. So, I, I think not. Um, I can just cut them with the angle grinder, put some keyway in, line it up the wheels, slot the wheels on, and then do the same with the hubs, and it should all be fine. That's my theory. But with it being two-wheel drive, um, and no differential, um, it makes the turning circle will be much wider, the steering will not be as, as responsive, but generally I should have more fun on it because when the wheels can't turn independently they'll slip when they slip you lose traction and I want this thing working for the snow so you can kind of see where I'm going also 
less traction on wet grass. This thing before was insane on wet grass. You could have so much fun on this thing. It will not roll. It just goes sideways, especially with wheels like that. <laughs> I'm joking, that will get replaced. Uh, maybe once I've blown it up. Once I can see more of the plies inside, because you can see plies in it, like there. Once you can see, like, double that, then I'll think about changing it. <laughs> I don't think they're expensive anyway, so I could even have a look for some on eBay tonight. But anyway, yeah, that's all about it. I am planning on putting something rather exciting in this space here, but unfortunately, I mean, I will have to cut the, the rear of the chassis up and extend it because it is nowhere near big enough at the moment. So you guys can probably see where I'm going with that. So I'll. Uh... <coughs> so, sorry about that. I'll let your imaginations run wild with that because you're not going to be finding out just yet. As for now, you'll see another video soon of when I actually do the rear end, which will be sometime this week because I have to. I'm waiting for my bearings to be delivered because I still have to machine down to probably about this line here actually. You see in the axle? I'm machining to roughly down to about there, down to 25 millimeters on both sides, so the axles slip on. That way, I won't have problems like I did with this axle. The bearing sat there and here, I believe. Oh, you can see where it's bent there. Fuck me. <laughs> well, you might not be able to see it, but yeah. Basically, I was having a problem because it was there's no restrictions on it except for the grub screws. You go over a bump, you go around corners, the grub screws loosen off, and the axle slides. The the chain comes off. It's all the bomb. Like this, once this has got the two pieces machined down, it's gonna have a larger piece in between the two bearings, and it can't go either way because the bearings hold it in place. Um, I may, once I put it all together, I'll probably order another set of bearings because I've got to admit, when I took the old bearings off, they were quite hammered. So, <laughs> they are going to, I think they do take quite a battering. I don't think pillow block bearings are designed for this purpose. So, oh well, shit happens. Let's uh, get inside, get it edited, and get it uploaded for you guys. See you later. Ugh, tripod's wet. I'm not happy. It fell over the other day. This thing's brand new and I've Snap the little handle off. So, yes, I'm not a happy bunny about that.